Welcome to the Donahue Group. Uh, delighted that you could join us for another fun-filled, fast-paced episode talking about issues uh, of interest, I think, around the state of Wisconsin. Joining me, Ken Risto, king of social studies <laughs> <laughs> for the Sheboygan uh, Area School I've District. been traded for toner yeah, uh, and over he, the last couple of days. We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, Tom Paneski, uh, professor of mathematics, University of Wisconsin, Sheboygan campus. Thank you. Former state senator, Cal Potter, and assistant superintendent for library services, and now just a bon vivant, retired and, <laughs> and traveling the state, causing trouble wherever he goes. That's right. We have lots to talk about at the state level. I just want to start with the uh, attorney general's race, just because I'm interested in the fact that not much has happened. Um, there's a primary coming up in a <clears throat> month, and there has not been a lot of discussion, at least in our area, I don't think. I think if we went out on the street, true or false, how many people would know that there was a primary both on the Democratic and Republican side? How many people would know there's an attorney general? <laughs> well, now that's I mean, pretty I, cynical. Oh, I don't know. I, I think it's that's think? the exciting race, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And this comes from a person who, by the way, has had a wardrobe change oh, between uh, episodes. It's a first between <laughs> yeah, episodes. First. It's a first in our group. No. <laughs> I feel bad. Yeah. Maybe I should just go shirtless. <laughs> no. Spare I, us, uh, please. Skins, uh, skins game here. Skins, yeah. Yeah. skins yeah. and shirts. Yeah. Excuse You're on the shirt me. team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time out. Time out. Way time out. But at least your wardrobe consultant, I think, could work with all of us <laughs> and you know. We need some corporate underwriting. Right. Oh. You know for hair, makeup, you know, the whole thing, because, you know, the show is going places. But in any event, where we're going right now is talking about the AG's race. Uh, Lautenschlager versus Falk. Um, I was in Madison over the weekend. Kathleen Falk has a uh, campaign headquarters right off the square. Uh, a couple people in it. Didn't look like it was a beehive of activity, but it was a Saturday. Um, Lautenschlager uh, getting into a little hot water on these issue statements regarding the referenda, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, Van Hollen is starting. It's the first guy to use media. As I understand, uh, reading the journal Sentinel today, he's going to be launching uh, TV ads, um, uh, running against Paul Bucher, to my mind, the better known person. Um, well, his lawn signs out. There's a couple um, in Sheboygan. That's right. That's right. But, yeah. and, then, and then Holland? Van Holland. Holland, endorsement by former Governor Tommy Thompson. Yeah. Who injected himself into the middle, I mean, in the middle of the primary, but all of a sudden he wanted us to know how he felt. Yeah. There was a, and I, I, I wish I could pinpoint it here, but there was a voter concern in Milwaukee. If you want to vote in the, you know, you're a Democratic voter or something, and you want to vote for Booker or something like that, you can't vote in the Democratic primary and then just go over and vote in for Booker. And right. so what should you do? And uh, they, they were discussing back and forth on the radio. You know, it's going to split the vote, I guess, because people are going to be trying to decide which way to go. Well, it's interesting to have a primary on both sides so you don't have, you know, Republicans mm -hmm. crossing over to, uh, to vote for the Democrats and back and forth. Right. because. You folks would know better than I, but Wisconsin is one of the few open primary yeah. states right. mm -hmm. uh, in and the U.S. To me, it's a non-issue, but it is an issue amongst the public because they think they should be able to play both sides. sides that's but actually, right. this is a nomination process that yeah. was created by La Follette's to replace the back smoke-filled room nomination process. Mm -hmm. Let the people decide who the candidates are rather than the politicians and wheeling and dealing. So when you put it in that context, uh, that's how it came to be, but a lot of people have not... I guess they've gotten used to the full democracy we have, and they mm -hmm. just don't see why they can't play both sides. Predictions on Falk versus Lautenschlager? I think it depends on how forgiving uh, the rank-and-file Democrats are. Um, because of the primaries that are out there, you're going to see Democrats sticking on their column, and Republicans oh, are mostly oh, sticking okay. in their okay. column. How forgiving are Democrats for her transgressions, which happen to be most, most notable is the drunk driving conviction. Um, I think in Wisconsin, maybe she'll get more um, forgiveness than uh, maybe we'd expect in the Bible Belt, because people do like their uh, brandy and beer and other things in the state. So she may uh, indeed get more forgiveness. I think she's done a competent job as Attorney General. She's just made a big mistake by uh, having this drunk driving uh, conviction. I think but she's been it, a good Attorney General. Is it, is it true? Doyle's kind of distances his, himself from her? Oh, I, big time. Big yeah. time. Okay, well, will Doyle supporters want Lautenschlager on the ticket in, in November? 
They may not. They may rather run with Fuff in mm -hmm. November, and so they may, on the Democratic side, vote mm -hmm. for, for her. Professor Risto, any prognostications? I listened to Falk. I didn't hear uh, Lautenschlager on uh, Wisconsin <coughs> Public Radio. They were doing a series of having the candidates talk. They had their half hour with Kathleen Dunn or whoever it was. I think it was Kathleen. And I listened to Falk, and I was waiting for her to, to make the case of why her rather than, than Peg. And my impression was basically what her argument was, was you know some sort of vague thing about priorities and where we're going to put our money, and that didn't really work for me. And the other one was, you know, I'm an executive uh, and I've been used to working with police and I've been used to working with uh, getting budgets and prioritizing and making things work even though I didn't have the money. I just don't think that's a compelling uh, case within the Democratic primary, so I don't think, I don't see, I don't see this going anywhere. I, I think one of the reasons she isn't, and maybe she'll embark upon a more hard-hitting primary campaign, but uh, Democrats uh, in the past have had instances where in primaries they've so beat up each other that there's not right. much left for a Republican to do yeah. after September. Mm -hmm. A classic example was the uh, was it Carly uh, Schreiber race um, when it ended up uh, that Marty Schreiber was done after the primary, uh, Lee Dreyfus didn't have to do very much at all to walk into the office. Um, not that he wasn't uh, a good candidate, but, but there, it was yeah. just such a dirty <clears throat> primary yeah campaign that I'm not so sure that uh, people aren't just telling Kathleen Falk, don't bring up uh, too visibly the drunk driving thing in case she does indeed Lautenschlager get through the primary. The Republicans will do their darndest to make the voters aware of that transgression. Uh, you don't have to knock her down two notches before we get into the yeah. general election. So that may be part of it too. Didn't yeah. Feingold get in that way? Well, oh, absolutely. Yeah. There was a big naga, and yep, all of a sudden sure. he came in with a few. Yeah, he said he was the clean one. And clean one. Yeah. Boop, there he yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and Moody and Chakota. Yeah. Yeah. Ch Chakota, Chakota. 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 Just, really. That was, that was personal and it was pretty ugly. Yeah. So, um, my, I really don't know. Um, I am just surprised there has not been more of a campaign. And while I think your points are well taken, at a certain point, um, Cal, you have to decide, I'm running to win. I'm not running to preserve the candidate who is going to be running against the Republicans. Mm -hmm. And um, the only way you can really attack Peg Lautenschlager, I think, is, um, is the drunk driving and, and state car use mm -hmm. issue, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And to me is, is, the, is, a, is a career ender. And so she hasn't done that, and I give her credit because to me, that's, there's some relationship, but it's not defining, in, in my opinion. Um, but what, I mean, Peg's done a great job. She's a prosecutor. I mean, she's a law and order person. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think Falk is a very skilled lawyer. I mean, she was the public intervener and mm -hmm. I think did quality, yes. quality legal work. And it always helps to have an attorney general who's a good lawyer. And we've been lucky in res you know, with respect to that. Our AGs typically have been good lawyers. Um, so it'll be interesting. And the, the, I didn't hear the interview that you were talking about. Those are just issues that are snooze alarms right. for the public. They just don't grip people. No, nope. no. Nope. Don't, they don't drive, they don't force people within a, a Democratic primary to, to abandon right. a, an incumbent. Right. And you're right, though. It is a tough, it is a tough uh, wire to walk. Yeah. Because you really, under, you know, everybody knows that those sound bites are going to be later used against uh, the candidate within your yeah. party should you not win. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what I, I sensed. I don't even, I don't know Falk from, I've never met her, but I've seen her in lots of different public settings where she's talking. I don't think she's that kind of person temperamentally. I don't get that impression. Mm -hmm. She's very, very competent, very, when she ran mm -hmm. for governor, she, uh, you she, know, she ran a very high-minded, uh, yeah. issues-oriented yeah. candidacy. And she, and she may be quick. operating on the premise that the people who are going to vote in the primary, that 20 some percent that didn't yeah. come out in the primary, are aware of the fact that uh, Pig Lautenschlager used the state car for personal mm -hmm. use and was convicted of drunk driving, and they've made up their mind already. Right. And, and just, yeah. doesn't everybody, don't all politicians these days run their races based on polling data? Yeah. And they may have done some focus groups to indicate just what you said yeah. that the, the likely primary voters know all about this and have made up their minds anyway. Yeah. So, but interesting. I do think, and I don't want to beat the AG's race too long, Van Hollen and Booker is much harder to, to get a handle on. Um, I don't, I'm not even tuned into that race other than I know they're running. I'll probably, 
I'm going to vote in the Republican primary, but I'll probably make up my mind in first week in September mm -hmm. and read some stuff about it. Al Buka couldn't put Chamora in jail, so I'm not so sure I want to turn the keys over you know, <laughs> to him. <laughs> so Jerry, okay, well, if you vote in the other primary, it'll make any difference what you think. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jerry Boyle, uh, Jerry Boyle should be Attorney General then. Yes, um, indeed. A little, saying, exactly. a little controversy out of the AG's office. Um, I, I had not been aware, um, either statutorily required or just typically, the Attorney General will offer a summary of the issue presented in statewide referenda. Um, that has come out of the office on the same-sex um, marriage amendment and the death penalty. The death penalty issue statement has now been retracted and is being redone based on bad information, as I understand it, that came from the Elections Board. That sounds a little strange to me. I have no idea what's going on there. Have you read the proposed um, marriage amendment? That mm -hmm. last sentence is very tricky. I have Well, that last sentence, I think, is, is the victory of a very fundamentalist uh, group agenda. But it's, it's very vague. And well, it's very what, general. And what the, and what the AG's <clears throat> issue statement, and they're not retracting this. They're saying, this is true. We have spent time looking at this. We didn't get bad information from whoever. And they're saying, essentially, um, the last sentence is not clear, and it's going to be open to further judicial and legislative mm -hmm. interpretation. Well, I think if you That's look at That's astonishing to me. Well, if you look at the groups that are coming out against the amendment, they're coming out because of that last sentence, the medical society and many labor unions and a lot of groups that you would think probably would take a walk on this issue, they wouldn't get involved, but they're getting involved because this, so many contractual things are really going to be litigated is what they can, their conclusion yeah. is. Uh, it's very interesting yeah. to me and, and you know it's just one of those, one yeah. of the things that we learn as lawyers before we, you know, we make our arguments and we run off to court, but my senior partner always said it, it helps if you read the statute first. And that was a yes. good lesson for me. And uh, it helps to have read the amendment, which I had not done carefully, quite frankly, mm -hmm. until I had seen this issue statement. And uh, well, even the, even the supporters of the amendment are trying to walk that, that last sentence away. I mean, as, as I've been yeah. watching the debates in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel yeah. and, on, on, again, in Wisconsin Public yeah. Radio and a couple of the sources, they're simply, you know, they're, it's sort of like watching The Wizard of Oz where they're saying, well, don't look, Dorothy, behind the yeah. screen don't at worry that about man. This, Just don't worry about that. I assure you. Because we can it, promise you that there will always be these rights for family medical leave or there always will be these rights for partners domestic in terms of hospitalization and, and domestic abuse mm -hmm. and, you, and all that. None of that's going to be affected. Well, then mm -hmm. you ask yourself, well, what's that second sentence in there for? And when they're pressed, I haven't gotten a good answer from them yet. Well, you know, I, uh, Joe Leibon was in a, in a setting where he was being pressed on that at a forum uh, out in Plymouth a couple of months ago. Yeah, I was and asked that one. And yeah. I, I was one of the first ones who asked him the question. Right. I says, we can, we can have an honest disagreement over the applicability of the word marriage, but the second sentence clearly says that the contractual agreements uh, that people are entering into may not be legal, and I don't, where did this come from? And he was just, he didn't. He just basically said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not going to, it's not going to affect anything. Yes. Well, so now we have a constitutional amendment, which has got a clause which doesn't have any f a force and effect in the law, beyond maybe to eliminate mm -hmm. the, the word civil unions and not go the route of Vermont. Yeah. And, but nobody's saying that out loud. I mean, that would yeah. be the most narrow interpretation of that statute, of that, of that, I've, that clause. I've concluded I that things which are passed in the legislature are usually lobbied by someone. And I think it was some of the most conservative homophobics out there who, who didn't like anything other than the very traditional marriage and male-female setting, and they went just a little too far, and now they've got the, a debate on their hands as to what the repercussions are going to be of yeah. throwing out the net so widely. Yeah. yeah, It was interesting. I was down at, I happened to be in Milwaukee Saturday for the Third Ward Jazz Festival, and there's lots, lots and lots of folks down there. And uh, there were some folks doing some flyers and, and of, of all different types, but generally, you know, third mm. ward, you'd imagine, okay. be democratic. Sure. democratic. And they were, and there were lots of discussion uh, along those lines. People were saying, you know, uh, the first, the first part, well, we can agree to disagree. We understand why some people want to do that, but what's really generating, generating a lot of discussion, and what's getting people to sign whatever people's letters of support and uh, petitions of support is that second sentence, because most people are still of the mentality that, well, we can maybe keep marriage to the heterosexuals, okay, for whatever reasons, but 
people who are living in, in certain committed relationships should have at least some civil rights mm -hmm. when it comes to at least some issues. And they don't believe for a moment that the way this is worded, that a future court, when we talk about activist judges, you know, whether it be conservative activist judges or liberal activist judges, it's, it's going to get, it, the, the way, that, that thing's so vague sure. that any court in the land yeah. can, can define it any old way they want to. And interestingly enough, while the marriage amendment has really generated a lot of interest, I mean, there's a local group that's uh, the Fair Wisconsin, uh, I think is a statewide group, but there's a, a local group that, that I have heard speak, and, and they're working hard on it. I'm not hearing anything about the death penalty. And again, we're in August. This is a yeah. November election. Right. People and are on I'm vacation. Sure. Come September, yeah. everybody's back in school, everybody's home. I'm just going to be interested to see what the, what the death penalty discussion yeah. is. Um, you know, some of the traditional, more liberal groups that would get involved in this, um, I think, are probably off working on the other amendment too. So right. I think there is a, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. an opportune time for those who are pro-death penalty of trying to sneak this thing in. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be and, interesting. And I think some, like, you know, your faith community, my faith community, have, well, those two, <laughs> as different as they are, are going to. I think you're going to see a lot of, as time goes on, a lot more relig uh, discussion from religious leaders mm -hmm. about about the, the death penalty issue. Um, I think there's just a lot of politicians right now running away from the issue because of the Hallbach case and nobody has any, you know, not a study in profiles and courage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And it is an interesting campaign tactic to call out your base by having mm -hmm. giving them something sure. to vote on that is more than just a person but is an actual issue. Yes. And it has certainly worked in recent years. It's a brilliant let's face it, brilliant political strategy. And um, I'm cynical enough to think that there has to be at least some of that going on sure. here. But it's interesting to me how the marriage amendment is kind of tending to backfire a little bit. So uh, I was accused of being cynical just a little while ago here. But I see here I'm an optimist. I, I don't have any problem with that. I think this, this yeah. generates a lot of great discussion and debate. And, and if decide, they all come out and, and we decide <laughs> as we decide as a society what kind of what kind of society we want to live in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I you know, like I said in a couple episodes back, bring these debates on. I'm looking forward to them. The, well, the only problem is if, if everything focuses on the marriage issue and yeah. people are voting only on that marriage issue and sort of drag the, the yeah. catch dragon in this last sentence, all of a sudden the repercussions are years of litigation. You know, you're never going to probably go back, and not for a long time, to change the Constitution again, to rectify this. You're going to have all, these lit all this litigation to try to sort things out. That's a no. good thing. <laughs> we could have That's more right. shows. You can tell I'm not an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's not a better and, way and to spend time and money. And similarly, you yeah. hope that the discussion about the death penalty is not going to revolve around whether we are we like or don't like Stephen Avery, yeah. you know, or whether we should, whether he should get life in prison. Should a jury decide that, or whether we, you know, he should fry, you know, as I hear some people say. You're hoping that the discussion is going to be a little bit more um, <laughs> high-minded, high-minded, high and, high and thoughtful than that. Should, yeah, yeah, should you? <laughs> never yeah. mind. <laughs> so. Well. And in cynical times, we tend to lose faith in the voting populace. We tend to lose faith that people can actually listen to issues and make reasoned choices, that they can get the information they need, that they get more than just a 30-second ad that either makes them feel good or paints the opposition as, you know, the devil or Hitler. Speaking of which, um, I want to just talk about Are, nasty ads. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Tom. No, but I was going to say, is that... You know, you put on the, a new shirt, so these two, I think you These should. two issues are going to be questions then to all the candidates. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah. And so we'll see how the candidates mm -hmm. answer them, how they, how they clarify them in their mind, and then it gives reason for people to vote for them or against them. And I think, you know, so far, yeah. I think the discussion about um, this amendment, the gay rights, the gay, gay marriage amendment, and even the stem cell discussion, it's been really reasonably good among the population. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to play out with the death penalty. It's maybe a little bit more emotional for some people, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. well, I can't think it's much more emotional now that I think about it than, than you know rights of homosexuals in our society. But well, I um, hope you're right. The, the only downside, one of the downsides, is was it last week that there was a Pew Charitable Trust did the mm -hmm. uh, survey and where people get their information from, and they found out that 20 percent of the people get no news at all. And, oh, yep. and then there was a 27% get it from the Rush Limbaugh's, 
in almost up to half of the people get no news or they get it from some very biased source that, you know, the old evening news and the newspaper and so on has really gone down as far as a source. So when we talk about enlightened debate on yeah. things, are people actually really aware? I well, can't then there's the blogosphere, which of course is just yeah, a, sure. a whole new interesting... Yeah. Um, but the, the, the report that came out through public, yeah, yeah. public radio it was, um, was really kind of a shocking mm. change to the way it was 20, 30, 40 years ago and where people got their news. How 20% of people can't get news. I mean, it seems to they get none. Wash, it washes over they us. Don't, they're, they're, they're not don't interested. Get, in yeah, they're, they're not they're, interested. They're not interested. Yeah. That's right. Of course, those folks are probably not voting. Yeah. Well, that would be a likely... Let's hope that yeah. they don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or that their only source of information is not TV ads. Um, it seems to be heating up pretty early in the gubernatorial race. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this is not going to be an enlightened debate on issues, uh, as far as I can tell, it is going to be, you know, which candidate is more of a crook. Um, the, I was just fascinated by the, the uh, commercial likening uh, Doyle, well, it wasn't so long ago that he was likened to um, uh, the Ku Klux Klan, no, uh, to um, Governor uh, Wallace. Uh, and now it's it's um, President Nixon. Um, gee, these are early. Um, they're, I, I haven't seen any of those. Oh, the, well, the yeah. Nixon one is, to me, particularly vicious. Yep, it's, it's Whoa. not pretty. I mean, like, where are you going to go from here? This is August. I mean, yeah. what's going to come in September and October? Um, what's so disheartening yeah. about that ad and the Thompson ad that are also running against the governor? is that we're not getting into anything about uh, state finances or highway construction and all the other issues that are sort of bubbling up there and saying, hey, somebody ought to listen, look at some of these issues because they're major things the mm -hmm. next governor needs to contend with. So, you know, you're right. Not only is it vicious, not only is it expensive, not only is it 30-second um, ad-oriented, none of it's based on any issues that really the governor for the next four years is going to have to deal with. That's sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And freedom of speech is construed by both the Wisconsin and U.S. Supreme Courts would seem to indicate that this free-for-all that has become our election process, pretty corrupt in my view, it's all for sale to the highest bidder, is freedom of speech and there doesn't seem to be any way that we can get around it. I think we can have, in my mind, we would redefine freedom of speech uh, in a campaign context in a way that would ensure thoughtful debate and um, uh, the moneyed interest will always have a place, but uh, See, the, the only ads I've noticed were the uh, anti-green uh, uh, ads, and the one that I thought was pretty catchy was the uh, the stem cell one, where the the mother and her mm -hmm. child, and of course that's misrepresentation of Green's position, but. I what what that, is Green's position? But, it, but it's... Uh, <laughs> He's voted I, I just, against... No, I'm, I'm, really, I'm not being retarded. Uh, I mean, I'm really I, not quite sure in yeah. my mind what it is. He's but, voted against all stem cell research it, wait, as federal funding for stem uh, you mean, cell uh, research. You mean uh, embryonic stem cell, right. not adult stem cell research. Correct. Right. Yeah. Is that what it is? Is that I, the distinction? I don't... I don't yeah. I, okay. Uh, in the existing lines that the president originally... He supported that. Supported that, that. Yeah. But uh, I thought they have a catchy line, you know, uh, this uh, green's position is extreme. Those kind of rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> Green is extreme. Green's, green's too extreme. <laughs> is too extreme. I thought, well, okay. that yeah, might, that's, that's an easy catch That's, that's going to be the mantra from the Doyle. Yeah. But, that, yeah. <laughs> but in comparison to the Nixon ad, and I've seen that ad, and I think it's pretty well done, and I think it always happens that, you know, positions do get misrepresented. They've got to. I mean, you can't do a thoughtful discussion of the intricacies of everybody's positions in a 30-minute uh, ad like that. But, second, 30-second um, ad. It's, yeah, 30-second ad. We should be ad. so lucky. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, there you depending. Go. I'm sorry. Get more um, sleep that way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them right here and tell them that they can, you know, do their, their infomercials uh, right here. Um, it was much more of a soft pitch. Uh, than the than the Nixon ad or the the um, Ku Klux Klan ad or whatever that that that, that oh, they've done against I don't Doyle. Know. I don't know. No. No. I mean, I'm the guy wearing the red shirt, and I shouldn't be wearing. We should be switching shirts here, probably. Yeah. No but, kidding. Um, I think if you're really you calling Green a you know, <laughs> Green a kid Wisconsin? killer, you know, 
basically the subtext of that is, you know, Green doesn't mind these little girls dying, I mean, for his position. I, it's pretty, that's a pretty tough spot. Yeah. I think, you know, from my, I think if I were a Republican, I think I'd find that spot pretty, a pretty tough mm -hmm. spot too. Now, I just don't know why Green's going, I mean, I can understand why Green's going ugly early, but I don't understand using Nixon because, first of all, he's a, you know, plague on your party, and, and secondly, you know, he's got money from Abraham. I mean, I just don't, I think most people think all politicians are corrupt anyway, so these charges aren't really going to go anywhere. I don't think they have any legs unless all of a sudden somebody indicts the, you know, the governor for you know, corruption. Yeah. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. I think it's always a question of we had a fundraiser and five days later or five hours later or five weeks later, you know, these people got a government contract. Well, I think most people say, yeah, that's the way it works, you know, fortunately or unfortunately. So I just don't, and plus I said, you know, Green's got money. Green got money from Abramoff. I mean, does he really want to go down that road? I just don't see that as a very effective mm -hmm. campaign strategy. Well, I think he's trying to find very hard-hitting ads uh, to go after Doyle because not only uh, is the Doyle campaign, but there are all those this independent expenditures are entering yeah. your fray, yes. citing the, his vote uh, in favor of drug companies, and the other one was in favor of oil companies. So here you got everything negative against Green, and now it's Green saying, how do you combat that? Well, the political gurus say you fight negative ads with negative, negative ads. ads. And yeah. so here we come, and it's just piling on as what it's going to be for the next two months, is what the, some of the prognosticators are saying. Is that it's not, it's not going to clear up, it's just yeah. going to get worse because they've got 40 some million dollars to dump into the media, mm -hmm. and they're going to do it by just uh, continuing to have a barrage of negatives. Mm -hmm. And how long do people will tolerate it? I just turn it off and I watch public television most often. Um, but some people apparently do watch this and as long as the polls you're show stuck it. in the middle of a Seinfeld episode and there you are. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you just run to the refrigerator. Well, there you go. With, with the new DVD, you just kind of bypass the call, exactly. all the commercials. Too. Yeah, we have just yeah. a couple of minutes. We only have one minute left. Hardly time to get into ethics reform. But interesting, the Common Cause, the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign, and another group whose name is escaping me, uh, asked uh, all the candidates for their... Uh, League of Women Voters, I think. League of Women League Voters. League of Women Voters, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We... This will be for another time when Tom will be wearing yet another outfit, and uh, we we thank his wardrobe consultant. It has really classed up the program. We and the rest of us will change clothes between the next. There we go. Thank I you. Like the red I like the red. I like the red.